faces here and then these faces. Oh, looks like you did your hair today. So and obviously we saw you just four weeks ago. I know you were not very happy after the end of that fight. Are, are you, is it still bugging you? Are you still angry? Are you over it yet? What's what's the feelings? I look like uh, I look like uh, Anthony Pettis now, huh? <laughs> funny story with Anthony Pettis, you guys. Let me tell you this funny story. I'm at the PI. <laughs> and he walks. I got my eyes dilated, you know, short notice physical. So I'm at the PI and he walks in. <laughs> I walk up to him. Showtime. I go, oh man, like, are you autistic? And he looks at me like, <laughs> looks at me like what? I was like, well, no, because like you, you're wearing sunglasses inside. A, a lot of autistic people do that. And he goes, he goes, no, I, I'm not autistic. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> but anyways, back to, back to, back to, back to what you asked me, sir. Uh, any guys, any people that wear sunglasses inside are a bunch of fucking assholes. I mean, I think that should be known. All you UFC fighters that wear sun, if you're a UFC fighter and you wear sunglasses inside. You are the definition of a cunt. Now, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought I got robbed, man. I thought I got robbed. I mean, I think a lot of people did. The scorecard got it robbed. Was it close? And let me tell you why it was close. I'll tell you why it was close, you guys. What you guys seen there was a technical fucking sharpshooter. That guy's fucking gold chain. Jesus Christ, dude. What the fuck? Is that it's a fucking Mario guy again? The PS4 guy. Fucking A, dude. You, in the, you wore the gold chain today. I like that. What is that? Is there a cross on that? Or no, it's just a plain gold chain. Who let this motherfucker in? This guy looks like he should be robbing motherfuckers at ATM machines. Anyways, so what you have, <laughs> it's fucking factual. You know it, too. Who the fuck? You're a grown-ass man with a gold chain around your neck, bro. What are you fucking eating po can pasta with your uncle after this? <laughs> Silver. Silver. Okay, I have my eyes dilated. But <laughs> I like this guy. He's a cool dude. But uh, yeah, man, you know what you guys seen there, you guys seen there. So I'll tell you guys some my, my issue I have. I have ADD, right? I have ADD. So I go oh, and what? do, this is a funny story. A funny, you like this. So I go do uh, all my fight interviews and there's this uh, girl, I, I just learned the name Morgan. And like, she's sitting in front of me asking me these questions of like, so are you ready to kill a man in a week? And I'm like, Morgan, like, you know, she's a fairly attractive girl. I'm like, Morgan, I can't fucking, I can't talk about killing a man with you fucking looking back at me asking this, I can't even take that shit fucking serious. So then I had to go fucking stare at a wall and do the whole interview. So what I'm telling you guys is the level of distraction in this fucking head it's, I don't know if it's from CTE retardation or maybe I have fucking autistic like Pettis. I don't fucking know. So, yeah, to answer your fucking question, to fucking come full circle to this question, <clears throat> what you guys seen there was a matrix level style of boxing. Not one fucking punch landed. I seen everything. I was living in the fucking matrix. I was living in the matrix like Bobby Green before he went to sleep. I mean, that's how fucking good it was. But, you have judges that don't know fuck about fighting, and they see a big, scary black man throwing fucking big punches, and they're like, oh, man, that's, that's scary. That's scary. He won the fight. And another thing, too, another thing, too, everyone's like, well, you had a scratch on your nose. Let me tell you guys something. I'm fucking white, all right? Fucking fall beats me up. Fucking, there could be cold weather. Cold fucking weather will damage me. The moment the seasons fucking change, it looks like I did a five-round fucking fight. Black people in winter, what happens? Their skin gets harder. Chris Kerr is my best friend. I'm fucking, I witnessed this. The man's skin becomes tougher and harder. So let's not talk about damage. If anything, bunch of fucking racist. Racism. Straight fucking racism. We got to get this shit out of the sport. 100%. 100%. I continue. I don't even know where to go after. Uh, <laughs> so how did this fight come about then? I mean, are, have you been itching to get back in there because of this, or did they come to you? Oh, ah, like fuck God, no. I was, I was currently planning a snowboarding trip, and then uh, Mick calls me. I'm like, oh, Mick is going to ask me to do something I don't want to do. And uh, Mick, is, Mick is actually a solid fucking guy. He, again, to work with him, bro, it is, it's absolute fucking pleasure, you know? Sean was a little rough. Sean Shelby was a little rough. But Mick, I like Mick. Anyway, so he calls me, and I'm like, fucking Mick. You know, he has his little fucking Australian accent, the suave motherfucker. Probably just got done wrestling a crocodile, fucking having a threesome. And he calls me, and he's like, hey, you want this fight? And I'm like, God damn it, Mick. I haven't done anything for a month. I've been sitting on my ass. I've been planning a snowboarding trip. I've been practicing my wheelies, my little, my, my clutch feather. 
And he calls me, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And then his suave Australian motherfucking ass says, we'll pay you a decent amount of money. And I said, well, God damn it, I'm your fucking huckleberry. Let's go fucking fight a man. Did anybody around you try to talk you out of it and say, like, hey, maybe, maybe this isn't the right time? No. I mean, you know, there's always those fucking cowards in your, in your, in your, in your fucking head or your camp. But you know what? Eric, my man, I told Eric, I said, Eric, we're going to go into battle. And Eric's like, fuck it. Let's go into battle. He goes, but if you don't fucking listen to me, I'm going to kick you out of the fucking gym. <laughs> I was like, all right, man, I'll try my best. <laughs> uh, Nasruddin Imavov, uh, do you, what, what do you know about him? What did you know about him? Did you bother learning anything about him? So I don't, I don't, I'm not going to try to fucking say that name, man. I'm just, let's just call him the Frenchie. The Frenchie. And if we learned anything about the French, what are the French best at? Giving up. So, I mean, I haven't really watched him fight. I know he likes to, I know he likes to bang. He throws big punches, but, you know, he's still fucking French, man. It's a hard thing. To, that's a hard thing to move past. There's a lot of history of cowardice to move on from when you're fucking French. So, you know, maybe, maybe he's going to prove a statement. Maybe he's going to say that his country's fucking finally, you know, left the cowardice behind. But I don't, I don't fucking know. I mean, all the only thing the French are good at is having fairs and, and giving up and losing fights. But we'll fucking find out. Maybe he's different. Have you ever considered a job as a stand-up comedian <laughs> at some point in your career? No, man. I actually, I don't know. I just, I look at you fucking people and I just like to make fun of you guys. I can't fucking help it, you know. I can't fucking, is there, is there, there's a guy over there. You're actually, oh, you're a decent looking guy. I'm not going to make fun of you. You got the fucking... You got the, you trying to look like fucking Jack Hume, what's this guy's name, the Wolverine guy? The Wolverine guy, is that what you're going for? You're going for that, huh? I fucking tell this guy, this fucking guy. Anyways, no, I just, you know, I like, I like you guys. I like to talk to you guys. I can always tell the ones that don't like me, though. I feel like this guy has a little bit of a little hate boner for me. No, don't you fucking lie to me. You got a little hate boner for me. It's okay. It's okay. I forgive you. I don't like myself half the time. Sometimes I look myself in the mirror. I'm like, this motherfucker. I want to fucking just punch the mirror. I understand it. I understand it. All right, continue. So the last thing I was going to ask you, I mean, based on what happened in the last fight, based on the judging, like, will you fight any differently? I mean, are you, have you talked about, hey, I need to change something up because of the way these judges are looking at my style? <laughs> Bro, you know the merch... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say, it. I'm gonna say, it. you're a good looking guy. You're a good looking guy. But you know the merchant in Star Wars with the wings? I don't watch Star Wars. I hate Star Wars. To me, it's a bunch of gay guys with lifesavers, but I did watch it. You know, maybe it was like back when like Anakin Skywalker, you know the thing with the wings, the merchant guy? Tell me that motherfucker does not kind of look like him. <laughs> Tell me, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Tell me, you fucking see it, don't you? You fucking, you don't fucking lie to me. Anyways, <laughs> now since I got that thought out of my fucking head, <laughs> And we should please, will somebody please take this man's face and put it right next to that character just so we can all agree on this? But what was the question? Would you change your fighting style or approach what you're doing there any differently based on what Oh, yeah, no, again I, again, I got knocked out by a big fucking Brazilian four, four months, five months ago. I fought kind of like a bitch. I kind of fought like a bitch. We can agree. We can agree. You know, maybe I would have grunted more, thrown bigger punches, maybe thrown a couple kicks. That's what the judges like. They don't give a fuck about striking. They just want you to, ha, ha, ha. So, you know, maybe I would do a little bit, ha, ha, more. And I don't fucking know, man. I don't fucking know. Listen to the coaches, maybe. Hey, Sean. Uh, no, nah, this guy. Earlier, you took your glasses off and said that's rough. Just to confirm, were you talking about our faces? Yeah, no, you guys, no, I mean, I, I will say out of, out of the, let me tell you guys something about the media. There are some rough looking motherfuckers. These guys look like they spent a lot of time on the internet. When you're, when you post something on Twitter, and you see a, and when you see a nameless motherfucker comment like, oh, you're a piece of shit. I just want you to know what I'm looking at is probably the fucking people that post it. But continue. And uh, from one man of culture to another, what was your favorite part of Prince Harry's book? Wait, well, Prince Harry's what? You, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Prince Harry's book came out this week. Oh, my you're God. You're a big fan of the royal family. Isn't that, isn't that, I mean, when they're not fucking children. But, uh, I mean, isn't that what they do? Isn't that what you guys do? You, and then you fucking cover it up. But anyways. Sorry. I mean, the royal family, bro, that, if anything, that is just like, that's a reflection on England. That you motherfuckers wake up every day and you say, hey, and this is why America's better. You wake up every day and you say, look at this guy that was born into this. 
I'm going to worship this guy. I'm going to follow him. That is the most pathetic shit I've ever seen. You know what America says? You got four fucking years, maybe eight, and if you fuck it up, you better have private security following you for the rest of your fucking life because someone's out to get you. But you motherfuckers, you say, hey, you're born into this. We're going to follow you. and just You guys got to be fucking better. And Prince Harry, I don't know fuck about that guy. Who would you have as the king of England? <sighs> you know, I was a big fan on... Uh, I, li- I like when they said they're going to get out of the EU. I like that, you know? Do you like that? Were you, were you a, no, you look a little bit more on the liberal. <laughs> I, I, I voted to remain. Oh, yeah, of course you voted to remain. That's what I'm talking about. Like, the cowardice is so deep-rooted in your fucking country that you just can't root it out. I bet you want to get rid of fucking pocket knives, too, don't you? All you're going to have is a fucking fork to defend yourself. I've got three on me right now. Well, you're in America, bro. You should have a fucking gun on you. But, yeah, anyways, I, I don't know, man. England, you guys... I don't fucking know. You guys are a lost cause, man. Just fucking give up your country to the fucking Middle East or something because, you know, just give it up. Prince Harry wrote in his book that he got frostbite on his penis. And I'm just curious if that's ever happened to you. You're out in the snow snowboarding. Oh, man. I fuck, dude. How do you get frostbite on your penis? Fuck. I mean, I guess I guess when you're out in, like, he was in the Middle East, I guess when you got nothing, anything is a hole, you know? <laughs> I was just curious, you were criticizing the English, but you were just criticizing the French. Which of the countries do you hate the most? Oh, man, you know what? I'll tell you, when I was arrested, the one good thing about the French, I was arrested, bullshit charges, but it was two felonies. And, like, I had a lawyer say, you're going to jail for, like, a minimum of three years. And I was, like, 18, 19. I was like, who am I going to be after I come in jail? I'll probably come out like a white supremacist. I don't know if you guys have ever been to jail. Who's been, who's been to jail? This guy's, oh, fucking A, Boba Fett. He's been in jail. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> but what you do is I'll tell you guys what prison. Or I only went to jail. I wasn't in jail for a very long time. I'm not a hardened man. I, I scared the shit out of me. I almost fled the country. You get in there, right? Ba, 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 ba. You walk in, and then if you're white, which, you know, I'm, I am a white man, the white supremacists come up to you, and they say, <clears throat> And they give you the, they give you the, I'll stay down because I want to be in shot. But they give you the, the tour. They say, well, <clears throat> we are part of the, uh, the Aryan Brotherhood. And, and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't think I belong here, but I guess I'm here. <laughs> and they say, well, <clears throat> here's the rules. They help you make your bread. They help you lay down the rules. They say, well, here's the thing. You can't go to the bathroom when we're having dinner. If you shower at the black guy, you got to fight him. And I'm like... And then I stopped the guy, and I was like, Spider. I remember Spider. I just remember Spider. I'm like, listen, man, I'm not, like, I'm not really racist. Like, I'm not really, like, you know, that's not really what I believe in. And he goes, well, let me stop you right now. He goes, if you don't join us, you know, you're, you're pretty much on your own. You're kind of fucked. And as they're walking me into county, as they're walking me, and I walk because it's segregated. I walk past the segregation, the black sale. And you have all these Chris Curtis-looking motherfuckers grabbing the bars, threatening me, telling me they're going to fucking kill me. So now I'm, in this, now I'm in this predicament. Think about what you would do as a white 18-year-old. I'm in this fucking predicament. There's a man, Spider, telling me that pretty much if I don't join their, their club, their club, I'm going to go pretty much be outcasted and targeted. So, yeah. What I'm trying to say, you guys, I'm not fucking made for prison. So back to why I like the French. Back to why I like the French. And oh yeah, funny story about Spider. Spider, I don't know what you're doing, man, but you hope you're doing well. If you're watching this, I, you might. He had a swastika on his hand, right? This is how stupid I am. He had a little swastika on his hand. So I tell Spider, I'm like, Spider, <laughs> I'm like, Spider, man, like, bro, when you get out of jail, like, you know, I'm like 19. I'm like, when you get out of jail, like, how do you get back into life? Like, how do you go and get a job with a fucking swastika on his hand? Spider looks at me. He's like, well, man, I'm fucking, I'm not getting out. And he's like, in here, they know I fucking earned it. And I'm like, what do you mean, earned it? And Spider goes, you got to fucking earn it. And I tell Spider, I'm like, Spider, I'm not in here for a long time. I'm not fucking earning mine. So anyways, back to why I like French. On jury selection, on jury selection of me about to, you know, on the jury selection, the, the, the day we all look forward to when we're going to fight the government. <laughs> I bought a plane ticket to France, and I was going to go join the French Foreign Legion because, you know, I, I wasn't wanted by Interpol. And so I walked to the DA, and I was said, listen, you motherfuckers, this is what I want. And my lawyer is like, they're not going to give you this. And I said, well, I, in my head, I'm like, I don't give a fuck because I'm going to flee to France. I'm going to go join the French Foreign Legion. 
You know, fuck yeah, I'll go be a Frenchie. So luckily, they took the deal. My lawyer was fucking shocked. But if it wasn't for you dirty Frenchies, I probably would have at least did about a year to three years in jail. So if it wasn't for you guys with the French Foreign Legion, I probably would have fucking took the plea and did a couple of years in jail. That was a lovely story. Thank you for sharing it. <laughs> so I like French. I like the French. Are we good? You guys are fucking love it.